Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Spatial Exploits. Today we're going to dive into Bayer Leverkusen of the Bundesliga and their new manager Gerardo Seoane and the tactics he's displayed in the first three matches of Leverkusen's league campaign as well as how formationally the team has responded and begun absorbing some of the knowledge that he's trying to pass along and the team that he's trying to create. Over the summer, Leverkusen had a very busy transfer window they let go of their Jamaican speedster and one of their star players in Leon Bailey to Aston Villa, where Dean Smith and company will try to figure out how to fit in Bailey with the departure of Jack Grealish to Manchester City. During his time at Leverkusen, Bailey was known as the Bayern harasser, where he would put in big time performances against the Bavarian club. But at other times of his Leverkusen career, he was very, very inconsistent and not bringing the same level of form that one would expect from a very young winger who is certainly on the rise. So as he looks to build out a career in the Premier League, Leverkusen brought in their new manager Gerardo Seawane who immediately hit the training pitches in a very shortened and hectic preseason. As he got acquainted with the players already on the team and what their working styles are, what they are like as human beings and how they are going to fit into his vision long term. So on the training pitches during preseason, Seawane came in with his tactical plan and development and guidance systems in order to develop the Leverkusen squad in a way that they can begin to show the signs of dominance that Seawane had at his former club, Young Boys, in the Swiss League. When he was with the Young Boys in the Swiss League, they actually won three straight league titles, and he primarily deployed a 4-4-2 formation with the fullbacks pressing up high up the pitch and the rest of the team converging into the middle and then that would lead to a tons and tons of crosses from the flanks as young boys were able to dominate the Swiss league competition through those bevy of chances coming one after another. Young boys due to their top of the league performances in Switzerland were also able to get some Champions League experience so Seawane brings with him some top tier experience by managing young boys in some of the Champions League group stage matches. That he's participated in so without further ado let's take a look at some of the tactical maneuverings that he'll make and the team that he has at his disposal as he takes the helm at Leverkusen. In the first three league matches in the Bundesliga Gerardo Seawane has went with the 4-2-3-1 formation and this has been collectively the starting 11 for the first three games. Up top you have Patrick Schick he had a great Euro tournament over the summer and he scored one of the most spectacular goals of the tournament at Hampton Park against Scotland where from almost the halfway line he was able to do a long range shot into the goal to help out his Czech Republic team and he finished as top scorer for the tournament along with Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal and now Manchester United. The 4-2-3-1 formation also comes with two lines of midfield. The line closest to the defense is going to have two holding midfielders that can rotate and become more of a box-to-box -box threat as well. And then in the line closest to the striker, they're going to have three men. So at Leverkusen, Amiri has started a few of the games. At other times, he's been subbed out and there has been Paulinho who also slots into this role. And as the team kind of gets through some of the injury bugs early on to start the season, you can see a lineup more of this kind where Demervai will be in the middle and then Florian Wirtz will be the wonderkind who is going to slot in to the left. Usually Wirtz can also come in here in the middle and Demervai can go here as a left footed left winger or you can move out Musa Diaby from the right hand side and move him to the left flank as well. And really in the early matches one of the things that Leverkusen has shown under Seawane is that the front four are very very interchangeable so you'll see Patrick Sheik coming into the midfield to pick up the ball that would allow Verts at times or whoever is playing the attacking midfielder role to go further up the pitch and become basically either a shadow striker along with Sheik or a lone striker who's waiting to receive the ball in order to pass it along to the streaking wingers. With the two holding midfielders Arangiz was the club captain last year but as Leverkusen hit a rough patch of form to end the season, he gave up the captaincy so he could focus a little bit more on his own personal game without having to also worry about how the team is performing collectively throughout the various important moments in a match. So he gave up the captaincy. So right now, Fredeci as the goalkeeper for Leverkusen, he's the captain of the team. 
and Arangis is now able to become more of a holding midfielder type and if Arangis is ever out or needs to be rotated out for rest purposes then Baumgartlinger is a veteran of the team and the Bundesliga so he could easily come in as well and help out and in the last match against Augsburg this past weekend Andrik also came in additionally if Florian Wirtz or Demerbay or Diaby need to go off then there's a new signing named Amin Atli who can come in on the right hand flank and in the match against Augsburg he nearly had a chance on goal as well coming into the match as a second half substitute. On the four man defensive line we have Michel Bakker who came in from PSG. He didn't get very many chances to impress at PSG so Leverkusen brought him in this summer under Seawane and he will be able to show how he can fit into the tactics so far from the new manager. On the right hand side you have Jeremy Frimpong who is a very young talent with a lot of speed a lot of pace and he influences on the right hand side a lot of the attacking that Leverkusen is able to do. And then the two man defensive partnership you have Jonathan Ta who has been a 24 year old 6 foot 5 center back he's built like a brick wall but He's been very very inconsistent in the past few seasons he was one of those rising stars a few years ago but his inconsistency problems and some defensive errors from time to time have cost leverkusen some matches and so while he's a serviceable and experienced player at the back who can hold his own in one-on-one -on -one situations he is liable to make a few mistakes but a close comparison to ta would be one of harry Maguire, but just not as talented in the sense that harry Maguire at the euros with one of the commentators was compared as a really good center back with not very many peaks but just very high floors in literally every skill that you would care about from a ball carrying one-on-one -on -one defensive expert of a center back so if that's harry Maguire's level then yonatan ta would be in the 70 or 80th percentile of harry Maguire is in the 99th for that type of description for a central defender usually partnering him in the league matches so far has been new signing Kosunu, who came in from Club Bruges. Kosunu is very very young but very very physical and fast and he can pass his way and help with the link up that Leverkusen like to do from the back to move the ball forward up the pitch. And what he'll need more than anything is a good run of form where he can get consistent game time and so far he has shown that ability so if he can stay injury free then he'll be able to be a good partner for whether it's Jonathan Ta or the next person I can talk about which is Edmund Tapsoba. So Tapsoba last year had a very very great campaign and he is from a comparison perspective similar to Khalidou Koulibaly of Napoli and that's a very very lofty comparison. He's, Tapsoba is not there at the moment but he can definitely grow into a player of Koulibaly's stature and abilities if he can get the right type of coaching from Seawane and build up a reputation at the back. He's already getting interest from other sides in Europe, so it remains to be seen if Leverkusen can keep him at the club beyond just this season, but when he comes back from injury, he should be inserted into the starting lineup, and then it'll be a matter of Kosunu and Ta switching back and forth with one another for game time. At the back, you have Lukas Hurechi. As I mentioned, he's a club captain now and one of the Bundesliga's better goalkeepers in terms of shots stopped and shots saved as well as all of the advanced metrics and the expected goals allowed in all of those types of categories. So he's pretty good at the back and he can hold his own in build up play from the back as well, giving Leverkusen essentially an 11th man in the build up. So now we're going to look at how Leverkusen build up from the back when they're in the attack phase of the game. We've added back in the players that are usually in the starting lineups these days, so a few of the players that were available and visible on the tactics board here on the pitch diagram here have been put back on the substitute bench and we're going with the starting 11 that would be Leverkusen at full strength throughout the Bundesliga season. So when Hurdechi has the ball one of the things he likes to do is scan to his left and right to make sure that if those passing options are available to the center backs he'll easily get the ball over to them and then they can build up play with a defensive midfielder coming in like this and then scanning and turning and pivoting to find open players further up the pitch so Demerbay or even a long ball to Sheik. In a, such a case where this is not possible, Hurechi would again survey the positions at the time, if possible Kosunu and Tapsaba would move over here, and usually a defender won't chase them at the beginning of an attack like this. So a pass can go from Hurechi to Kosunu, who can then ping the ball up to Frimpong on the right hand flank, and in these kinds of cases the Seawane midfielders do a really good job of showing their feet to the ball and indicating to their own teammates that they are available for open passings. So if Diaby is blocked up the flank and Demerbay is not an option, then Palacios will show himself and 
get the ball, receive the ball, and then he has enough technical ability as well to make a one-on-one -on -one move and get past the defender here. Otherwise, Demirbay knows to come in here. Diaby then makes confusing runs overlapping him to go into the middle. And with the search of thing, the defender has to make the judgment call of following and tracking Demirbay or following and tracking Diaby and letting this man here pick him up. And in some of those ensuing confusion points, the ball can find its way to Demirbay with a cutting chic going here, dragging this defender. If this guy here can't keep up with the pace of a Musa Diaby, then there's an open door here for Demirbay to send a left-footed cross into the box with Diaby having an open shot on goal. If we reset again, bring the ball back to Rodeci for a, another buildup, what can happen from the back is if Rodeci scans the options and he realizes that as Arangis from the holding role comes towards him, the defender goes and tracks his man and Palacios does the same thing and yet the defender follows. What it does is it creates this space over here in the middle of the pitch and so then Demerby knows to split out wide, create even more space. Wirtz does the same thing here. Diaby then has the choice to come in but usually he'll start to split out a little bit wider too and then Patrick Sheik is the tallest person on the team usually from the offensive side so then he'll move in and this space that's been vacated by the defenders tracking too close to Arangis and Palacios will cause the defending team to be now susceptible to a long ball from Hrdeci to Patrick Sheik. With Sheik then it becomes more of a build-up play so if Palacios can then break away from his man and that guy is trailing him then she can play a ball to Palacios and then make another cutting run this way. Diaby can do the same thing here. And then at the same time now, the whole team decides to come back in. And as they come in, that opens up the floodgates for Frimpong to make these types of runs and Bakker as well to make these types of runs. But usually one of the things that Leverkusen has been doing in the last three league games with Seawane is holding a very solid defensive structure. So if this is the play at hand, then one of the things that takes place is as Palacios is moving the ball forward and the defenders are tracking back, the rest of the team is actually not going to be pressing too highly because if they do and the ball gets lost and let's say Tapsaba is like somewhere over here and Kosanu is somewhere here trying to help build up the play and Palacios, for example, loses the ball here, then it becomes a very quick counterattack and Leverkusen can be left exposed because both of their fullbacks, while providing the width on the offensive end, would be too far up the pitch to provide the appropriate defensive cover. So this is something that Chelsea Football Club under Thomas Tuchel fixed that was a pressing issue with Flank Lampard because what would happen is even though Chelsea would play a three-man back line with a two-man defensive midfield with Angolo Conte and Jorginho for example, Jorginho, Conte and then all the fullbacks would all be pressing up in these positions and eventually the ball would get lost and so the genius of Tuchel was to actually keep the three center backs as far back as possible while hemming the defense back into their own half and ensuring that one of these defensive holding midfielders was always available through the middle. So whether it's the left holding midfielder in Narangis or the right holding midfielder in Palacios for Seawane's case and you can apply the same logic for Jorginho and Conte in the case of Chelsea. Additionally in the attacking phase one of the things that can help Leverkusen is the pace of their players, so Diaby is one of the fastest players on the pitch, usually Fringpong from the right back side is pretty fast. Bakker is not as fast as Fringpong and Diaby, but he has been able to do great in one-on-one -on -one situations in the first three matches of the league campaign. And his defensive solidity is actually one of the reasons why Arangiz and Palacios don't have to defend at the back line. They can actually keep a formation of this kind with Bakker back and Frimpong basically becoming a right winger, allowing whoever it is on the three-man attacking midfield line to move closer into the middle and build up play in that way and create overloads in the half spaces. The other great part about Leverkusen's attacking play is the fact that Patrick Schick does not always play as a traditional ball to the feet, hold up type of striker. He's actually very adept at switching positioning between himself and Diaby and becoming one of the pivot points and dragging his defenders in, allowing there to be wider space through the middle. Because if Sheik becomes like a gravitational force unto himself, then he's able to drag a defender with him to the wider areas. And then that's where the pacing of Diaby and Frimpong from the right flank can come in handy with Demerby's passing abilities. Such that if Sheik is now operating here, then a pass from Demerby to Diaby can find an open Sheik who can then allow Frimpong to cut back in through this way 
and if Diaby is cutting in and then Demerbay is a second man arriving on the spot, then a cross from Frimpong to Diaby, if he can connect with the type of form that Diaby is on right now, three goals in three league matches, he's pretty much going to connect every time and have a goal scoring opportunity. But if Diaby then chooses to uh, pass to Demerbay, he can also do that. And at the same time, Wurtz being a very technically sound player is going to also know to make this type of a run. So in case Demerbay misses or chooses to make one additional pass to Wurtz, they have those attacking options in play. When Leverkusen is on the defensive end of things and they're waiting on the opponent to build out from the back, one of the things they do with Patrick Schick is have him make angled runs to hopefully block either one of the passing options to the center backs or Diaby on this end to one of the other defensive partners. And one of the triggers to the Leverkusen defensive pressing is actually the opposing player receiving the ball with his back to the Leverkusen players. So if the pass here takes place and let's say Sheik is out here, then that's a trigger for Sheik to go and pressure him because he's receiving the ball with his back turned to Patrick Sheik. So that's a trigger because the defender in a very short time will have to make a turn to face this defender or go back to the goalie if Patrick Sheik puts on too much pressing. So if that happens and the defender feels Sheik coming down on him, then he'll pass it back to the goalkeeper and then perhaps some of these players here will start tracking back inwards to see if there's opening lanes but Leverkusen is very very good about ensuring that the ball gets passed throughout the back line but has trouble moving into the midfield so when such a thing happens and the defenders just have to keep passing the ball back and forth between them then the way most teams approach Leverkusen's defense is actually to go and have a direct pass via a long ball over directly straight to the attacker and then letting the back line of Leverkusen handle the aerial assault. But with defensive backs the size of Kosunu and Tapsaba and Jonathan Ta who's six foot five, most teams don't have the type of aerial capacity to win aerial duels in that manner. So a direct long passing scheme actually plays perfectly into Leverkusen's hands because Tapsaba can actually head it away to Radeci and then that sets the whole team up for a future build up to immediately because Arangis would come in, Bakker can shift out this way and immediately the play is back into Leverkusen's hands and then they can move further up the pitch as needed. Additionally, another trigger that was visible in the Augsburg game over the weekend was a defender had his teammate here and he had the ball and one of the things that Seawane has preached to his Leverkusen players is if they see a opposing player on the touch lines with the ball that should be a trigger to press them. So in the Augsburg game, Diaby, Frimpong, Palacios, everybody converged on this player. Eventually he lost the ball and then eventually there was a, and immediately that created a out of position defense as well as opportunities for Leverkusen to have an easier shot on goal immediately. So this ability to have certain pressing triggers that activate the entire Leverkusen defense is a integral part of Leverkusen maintaining possession of the ball for long stretches of the game and when they lose it or when they see those certain pressing indicators they're able to attack those with fearless intent knowing every man behind them is committed to it so they can run through the ball and through the press in an effort to win back possession and once they've won it back they have the quality in place to go ahead and be very very creative and lethal and for this season it will be Frimpong who's going to provide that pace on the right hand side with Bakker being the left back that can press up and make those advanced runs into the opposing half but will be required to be one of the three men that serve as the last line of defense. If Bakker is stranded up here then the players in the holding midfielder role of which there are two because of the 4-2-3-1 formation they know one of them has to drop back into the back three and still provide that cover for Bakker to press up. So it's a very fluid formation where the 4-2-3-1 can easily become the 3-1 5-1 formation with tons of width across the pitch as well as tons of pace and lethal intent. This should be an exciting Leverkusen team this season and with the crowds back more than ever at the Bay Arena it should be a very very compelling season in the Bundesliga and it remains to be seen if the success that Seawane had in the Swiss League with Young Boys will translate over to the Bundesliga but so far through the three league matches and the dominating performance that Leverkusen had against Wunten Gladbach is exactly the type of dominance needed to take the Bundesliga by a storm this season and potentially secure a Champions League spot for next season.